Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 34 where we look at my plans. But before that we look at the various leagues. Now I want to say before we do that, this is the second season where I've been making these videos and I've been running the mini league and see who's doing what. And so far my brother's been on this twice as the top scorer. My youngest daughter who has a zombie team has been on here twice. And now this week it's my wife who's the top scorer. And I've never been the top scorer. So uh, maybe I'm never going to be the top scorer. Funny story about my wife actually in fancy football. We started, I think I did my first fancy football with the Telegraph back in 95, the 95-96 season. And then I think my wife's first season was the 96-97. And she won our little mini league. And she knew nothing about football. But she just watched Euro 96 and she simply picked the football players that she thought looked the best. So she had people like Ryan Giggs, like David Beckham, these sort of players, and they just did really well. So based purely on looks, they're the players she picked and she won. So, But I'm not saying there's any luck involved, of course. So top scorer in the mini league for game week 33 was Helen with hot cross buns with a massive 141 points. So how did she manage that? Well, Captain Palmer helped for 52 points. The vice was on Fernandez for 15, so she identified the best two players there. And then Jackson, 14. Harlan, 10. White, 5. Garnacho, 4. But then she also bench-boosted. Look at that. She had Dubravka and Shah against Tottenham, and she thought that would be a good idea to bench-boost that. Got 6 and 13. Mitchell away at Anfield. She thought, oh yeah, that'd be good. 12 points there. And she had Salah on the bench. So when I saw her team, and this is before the game week even started, before the first game, I said, well, that's not a real bench. You wouldn't normally have Salah on the bench. And she said, yeah, looking at the uh, eight outfield players, she thought all the other ones would do better than Salah. And actually, as it turns out, nobody did any worse than Salah. So in her mind, that was a genuine good week to bench boost. And she got 33, which is more than a lot of people are going to get when they do their bench boost in game week 34 or 37. So, <laughs> so well done. That was a very good score. And um, yeah, well done. Am I ever going to be on this chart show? I don't know. We have a new leader for our league, which is Marcin Dogonski with Mardog with 82 points. That was with Palmer 26, Captain Harlan 20, Cunha 12, Solanke 7, Dubravka 6 and White 5. And on the bench Henderson 9, but to be fair, most engaged managers would have paid Dubravka before Henderson, so that was pretty good. As for me, I'm all the way down in 128th, I managed 73 points. That was Palmer 26, Isaac 12, Petrovic and Gusto 6. White 5, Captain Seller 4, and Watkins 7. What's interesting, looking at other content creators, 100% of them got rid of Watkins a few weeks ago. It's like, he's the highest scoring player in the game. Why would you get rid of Watkins? But there you go. And look at that, the perfect bench. Zero points all the way across. So that's a red arrow, very small red arrow, but I do think it's possible I'm going to get a few red arrows now because I'm not playing 11 doublers in Game Week 34. And some people are free hitting with 11 doublers. Some would be bench boosting. And in game week 37, of course, a lot of people are bench boosting and I'm not because I've used my bench boost. Game week 35, a lot of managers are wild carding and I'm not. I've used my wild card. So certainly game week 34, 35 and 37, I'd expect to get a red arrow. So this may be about as high as I get this season, but that's OK. You've had a nice time. <laughs> So I am 272 points behind top spot. So if I can outscore the leader by 55 points every week for the next five weeks, I can still win this whole thing. So that's something to look forward to. In the cup, last week we started following Pravnav Rane with Action Jackson. And this week they're up against Aunt Johan Agger's Crazy Boys. And they won. So we'll look at Action Jackson again this week. Captain Palmer 52, such a smart and obvious move. And yet I never did it. Harlan 10, Solanke 7, Dubravka 6, and then Barkley on the bench for 7, but that's fair enough, and 
hey, got through the cup anyway. In the Fantasy Challenge, it was Oliver Philpot who top scored this week with 76 points. And this week, the fun idea was yellow cards and red cards were worth big minus points. So Gabriel got a minus four. But apart from that, there was Palmer with 26, Captain Hallen 20, Regulon 8, Gvalio 12, Petrovic 6, and that's all. And then on the bench, nothing. So a nice perfect bench there. Thank you very much to everyone who watches these videos and likes and subscribes, leaves comments, etc. It's very much appreciated. So on the FBL Game Week website, you can look at the Content Creators League, see who's doing well. And of the people I like to follow online, Ben Krellin's currently winning. FBL Fran's down in third. Mark Southerns is sixth. And good old Harry's currently seventh. I would be all the way down in 51st. And the only person I sometimes watch on here would be FBL Heisenberg. So I'm beating him by four points at the moment. It's all very, very close around where I am. So I currently have two free transfers. And my current plan is I'm going to sell Foden and bring in Bruno Fernandes. Now, I realise most engaged managers would sell Foden to get in somebody who's got a double game week. But whoever I did that for, for example, a Palace player or maybe a Wolves player, I wouldn't really want them long term, so I would have to sell them again. So that's effectively another minus four. Whereas Bruno, I'm happy to get in and keep him. Now, I may bring Foden back in a few weeks, but he's away to Brighton this week whereas Bruno's at home to Sheffield United. And I quite fancy that fixture. So this is my plan at the moment. Now, Palace were very good at the weekend, so any of the obvious Crystal Palace players may be very, very good choices. So I may regret this move, but we'll see how it goes next week, I guess. So this is my team, how it lines up at the moment. I've got Salah. He's going to be wearing the old mule hat. He's away to Everton and away to Fulham with his mates Robertson and Darwin. And then the vice would probably be Saka at home to Chelsea and away to Wolves, with his mates White and Havertz. And then another double is Pickford at home to Forest, at home to Liverpool. And Aiton Norway currently flagged, hopefully he's playing, home to Arsenal, home to Bournemouth. There's a remote chance that if we find out he's definitely injured, I'll make a sub with him instead. But if he's still down to like 75% or so, I'll probably just play him. And then my single game week players, I've got Fernandes at home to Sheffield United. I've got Watkins at home to Bournemouth and I've got Isaac away to Palace. And on my bench, I would therefore have Petrovic away to Arsenal, then Palmer away to Arsenal, Trippier away to Palace and Gusto away to Arsenal. So three Chelsea on the bench. And as for the background picture, that's simply supposed to be hot cross buns that look a little bit like footballs because Hot Cross Buns got such a big silly score. And there we have it. That's what happened in Game Week 33 and my plans for Game Week 34. And if I was to give you any piece of advice for double game weeks, it would be don't fret them. Just if you have a single game week player who's got a good fixture like Watkins at home to Bournemouth or Fernandes at home to Sheffield United, I think they're probably better than a lot of the double game week players you could play instead. But what do I know? <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have fun in the double game week. Bye.